the lecture of today will be a very important lecture about uh, basic linear AOS examination. How to examine the interabdominal and interthoracic structures by endoscopic ultrasound, different stations and the anatomical structures and landmarks of each station. There are many structures which could be visual, visualized during endoscopic ultrasound examination, including the systemic venous circulation, the inferior vena cava, the abdominal aorta and its main branches, the celiac axis with its three main branches, left the gastric, splenic artery, hepatic, common hepatic artery, and the superior mesenteric artery, and so on. And also the portal venous circulation with the portal vein, superior mesenteric vein, and the splenic vein, and also the biliary system, including the common bile duct, and the gallbladder, and also the pancreas with its different parts, the uncinate process, head of the pancreas, neck of the pancreas, body of the pancreas, and the tail of the pancreas. So there are many structures which should be examined during endoscopic ultrasound examination, and these structures are crisscrossing each other. So there should be a roadmap for endoscopic ultrasound examination, and there should be different stations, and there should be landmarks for each station to complete our endoscopic ultrasound examination. Actually, there are four stations for endoscopic ultrasound examination, for abdominal examination by endoscopic ultrasound. Station one is just below the papilla, Station two is at the papilla. Station three at the duodenal bulb. Station four is just below the cardia and including the whole stomach. And also we should have a look on the liver, the mediastinum. Some prefer to do endoscopic ultrasound examination starting from station one. That is to say, at the beginning of the endoscopic ultrasound examination, we forward the echo endoscope to the stomach and then through the pyloric ring to the duodenum till the deep second part of the duodenum and then suck all the air and start examination from station one, from just through the papilla. Then we draw the echo endoscope gradually to go to station two at the papilla and station three at duodenal bulb and station four just below the cardia and the stomach. Some prefer to do the opposite. Some prefer to start with station for the cardia and just below the cardia and the examination from the stomach and then shift to the uh, endoscopic view again to go to the bulb of the duodenum to examine station three and then to examine the, uh, at the uh, region of the papilla and just below the papilla both methods are correct and i think the best way of us examination is the way that you are used to do and the way you are perfecting. So both methods of examination are correct. Nevertheless, let us start by each station and identify the anatomical structures and landmarks of each one. Station one, as I previously mentioned, is just below the papilla, and the aim is to visualize the uncinate process of the pancreas. Here, the echo and scope is just below the papilla. Here, this is the common bile duct and papilla, and the echo endoscope is just below the papilla. And at this position, I start to do upward deflection of the tip of the echo endoscope. Upward deflection means that the big wheel or the big knob uh, is moved towards my body. So there should be upward deflection in order to direct the probe towards the unseen process. Here, our landmark is the abdominal aorta appearing as a longitudinal structure. When I see this landmark, the abdominal aorta as a tube, then I am correctly locating and correctly examining the station one. Here's a part of the pancreas anterior to the abdominal aorta is the unseen process of the pancreas. Let us see this video. 
Yes, here I am in the deep second part of the duodenum, just below the papilla. With upward deflection, I can see the abdominal aorta in its longitudinal section. It appears as a tube. And this part of the pancreas, anterior to the abdominal aorta, is the uncinate process of the pancreas. So this station is very easy. And the aim of this station is to see the uncinate process of the pancreas. It is important to uh, mention that the uncinate process of the pancreas can be seen also from the stomach. So it can be seen from two stations, station one here, just below the papilla, and station four at the stomach, as I will mention later on. But here it is the best situation for AUS fine needle aspiration, because if there is uncinate process mass, it is very near to the echoendoscope, no intervening structures, so it is very easy to take biopsy from this station, but usually use 22G or 25G needle, because here the echoendoscope is tented, and mostly there will be some resistance with using of 19G needles. So this is a very easy station. Now we'll go to station two. We withdraw the echoendoscope slightly upward to face the pillar. And by then I suck all air to kiss the papilla. Here our landmark is a stack sign. The stack sign is the meeting of the common bile duct and the pancreatic duct. The common bile duct is the channel or the tube while the channel away from the echoendoscope is the pancreatic duct. And this is the region of the papilla. The upper normal of the common bile duct in normal person is up to seven millimeter. And the upper normal after cholecystectomy is nine millimeter. The upper normal of the pancreatic duct is up to three millimeter in the pancreatic region, two millimeter in the pancreatic body region, and one millimeter in pancreatic tail region. So let us look at station two. Here, this is the abdominal aorta, but here it is the transverse scan of the abdominal aorta. It is not a tube, but it is a circle in station two. And this is the papillary region. And here, the channel nearer to the echoendoscope is a common bile duct, and here is the pancreatic. Duct. And we notice here that is the muscularis propria layer of the duodenal wall as the region of the papilla. It is very important to identify the muscularis propria layer because if there is a papillary mass and invading the muscularis propria, then it is mostly a papillary adenocarcinoma and not papillary adenoma. It is T2 papillary adenocarcinoma, so it is not suitable for endoscopic ampullectomy but should be sent for surgery. Let us complete the video, this is the region of the papilla. This is the muscularis propria layer. And here we will put the color flow signal. This is the aorta, common bile duct, pancreatic duct. And here this is the superior mesenteric vein and superior mesenteric artery. Yes, common bile duct, muscularis propria layer, abdominal aorta, and superior mesenteric vessels. And here, part of the pancreas, part of the pancreatic head, part of the pancreatic head, uh, and out to the pillar region. So it is a common bile duct, again, pancreatic duct, and part of the pancreatic head. Okay, let us withdraw the echo on the scope more and more up to, loc to locate the tip of the echoendoscope in the upper second part of the duodenum, proximal to the papilla and next to the first part of the duodenum. This is a very nice situation. I like it uh, very much. This position shows us many structures. Those two big vessels in the left of the screen is the inferior vena cava and the aorta. And here, these two far structures, two far vessels, 
deep to the screen is the superior mesenteric vein and the superior mesenteric artery. And here expecting to find the common bile duct near to the echoendoscope, as I mentioned before, and the pancreatic duct next to the common bile duct. And this is a large part of the pancreatic head. And this position, usually we see most of the pancreatic head malignant masses, and we can properly judge the staging of this mess. Let us, let us continue the video. So this is the inferior vena cava, aorta, superior mesenteric artery, superior mesenteric vein, large part of the head of the pancreas, normal pancreas, salt and pepper appearance, the normal appearance of the pancreas, the salt and pepper appearance, expecting here to find the common bile duct. Yes, this is the common bile duct, the normal common bile duct, very nicely seen, and expecting here to find the pancreatic duct. Yes, this is the common bile duct, yes, and this is the pancreatic duct. So I can see many structures, most of the pancreatic head, common bile duct, pancreatic duct, superior mesenteric vein, and superior mesenteric artery. Here, the echoendoscope is at the upper second part of the duodenum. Now, still two parts of station four, very important parts. I should do clockwise rotation to see the left kidney, left suprarenal. Yes, this is the left kidney and left suprarenal. And to see the spleen when I do clockwise rotation. But the most important point, I should start doing clockwise rotation. I start doing clockwise rotation when I see the splenic vessels, the splenic artery and splenic vein, and put them in the middle of the screen. By then, I start doing clockwise rotation. Let us see this video. This is again the abdominal aorta. And this is the celiac axis, and this is the splenic vessels. This is splenic artery coming from the celiac axis and the splenic vein. Now I moved the echoendoscope inside. I pushed it forward to locate the splenic vessels in the middle of the screen. By then, here, this is the level of the pancreatic body. The level of the pancreatic neck is at the venous confluence, exactly. And the pancreatic body is at the level of the splenic vessels. Here, the splenic vessels are located in the middle of the screen. Then I can do now clockwise rotation, pancreatic body, pancreatic body. This is the pancreatic body. And here, still the splenic vessels. And here coming the left kidney. And there is a small angiomyolipoma, a small benign hamartoma, accidentally, accidentally seen in this left kidney. Yes, and this is the left kidney, very nicely seen, the sinus and the parenchyma. And here, this is the left kidney. Here, I can see the left suprarenal gland. This is the region of the pancreatic tail. At the level of the kidney and left suprarenal, this is the anatomical side of the pancreatic tail. Okay, yes, this is very nicely seen. Left suprarenal glands, and this shape is like also the seagull. So, this is the fourth seagull which saw today. Okay, and more and more clockwise rotation, and I can see the spleen. So, yes, and here's a part of the pancreas at this, at the at in between the spleen and the left kidney is the tip of the pancreatic tail. So to revise again, the neck of the pancreas is at the venous confluence of the splenic, superior mesenteric, and portal. The body of the pancreas is the level of the splenic vessels. And the pancreatic tail is the level at the left kidney and left suprarenal. And the tip of the pancreatic tail is interposed between the left kidney and the spleen. So this is the clockwise rotation. Coming to the last part, of station four, which is anti-clockwise rotation. I start doing anti-clockwise rotation at the level of the splenic vessels. I should locate the splenic vessels in the middle of the screen. Now I push the echoendoscope very nicely. Now it is in the middle of the screen. This is the splenic artery 
and the splenic vein. And this is the region of the pancreatic body. Now I will concentrate on the splenic vein. Don't push or pull. Just do anti-clockwise rotation. Sorry. Just do anti-clockwise rotation. Yes. Locate the splenic vessels in the middle of the screen and concentrate on the splenic vein. Now, anti-clockwise rotation, very nicely, I, uh, I went to the confluence of the uh, splenic, superior mesenteric, and the portal vein. Here, this is the region of the neck of the pancreas or the gene of the pancreas at the venous confluence. And here, this is uh, the pancreatic head. So this is the pancreatic head pancreatic head and this is the pancreatic neck and this is the portal vein going to the liver and the superior mesenteric vein here the superior mesenteric vein is the nearest structure of the echoendoscope opposite to that in station three of the duodenum and expecting to find the common bile duct here this is the farthest structure from the echoendoscope opposite to that of the duodenum expecting to find the common bile duct here, going to the region of the papilla. And this is the lumen of the second part of the duodenum, seen from the stomach. So from the stomach, I can see all structure. I can see the pancreatic head. I can see the pancreatic neck. I can see the papillary region. I can see the whole length of the common bile duct going back. Really, it is, uh, 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 at the beginning, it is difficult, difficult to, uh, follow up the common bile duct from this situation, but after the 10 patients or 15 patients, it will be much more easier and you will get the momentum of examining the whole intra-abdominal structures from the stomach. So let us continue this video. Yes, this is the superior mesenteric vein. Okay, and this is the head of the pancreas and very nicely seen here, the common bile duct. This is the common bile duct going to the papillary region at the lumen of the second part of the duodenum, all that seen from the stomach, and expecting here that the pancreatic duct is always in between the superior mesenteric vein and the common bile ducts, expecting to be here and going to join the common bile duct at the papillary region. So let us continue this video. Yeah, this is a common bile duct, the whole length of the common bile duct, air inside the second part of the duodenum, and expecting here to find the pancreatic duct joining the common bile duct. Yes, appearing here, yeah, starts to appear. This is the pancreatic duct joining the common bile duct. Yes, this is the common bile duct. And this is the pancreatic duct. And this is the venous confluence. And this is the papillary region. Yes, here it is very nicely seen. This is the common bile duct. And this is a pancreatic duct joining each other at the region of the papilla. And this sign tell us that there is no pancreatic division. The main pancreatic duct is normally joining the common bile duct as a region of the papilla. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Joining each other at the region of the papilla. Yes. And here, this is the venous confluence. And here, the whole length of the common bile duct. To be sure, we will apply Doppler. The, 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 the vascular structures will have a color flow signal, like the superior mesenteric. But here, the common bile duct and the pancreatic duct, no signal inside. Let us see some funny uh, videos. This is a pathological lesion seen in this station yes are now in the same station and this is the superior mesenteric vein and this is the pancreatic head and this is a very wide structure no signal inside actually this is dilated common bile duct it is seen dilated it is i think more than one and a half centimeters so it is pathological dilatation of the common bile duct and this is the pancreatic duct and this is the superior mesenteric Vein. What is the region of dilatation of the common bile duct? You can trace the whole length of the common bile duct in this station in a trial to know the cause of pancreatic 
sorry, of uh, dilatation of the common bile duct. Here, uh, it's appearing that is a structure. There is a structure inside the common bile duct, the mid third of the common bile duct. Here is the distal third of the common bile duct. Very nicely seen, an echogenic whitish structure with dense posterior shadowing. So this is a large stone inside the mid common bile duct. And of course, it is the cause of uh, common bile duct dilatation. It is a moving stone in the common bile duct down and to it. By dilatation. This is another video from the same station, but it is a distal, large distal common bile duct stone, impacted stone as the region of the papilla. This is a common bile duct, hugely dilated common bile duct with a stone, a large stone impacted in the region. In the region. This stone was interpreted by MRCP as a soft tissue mass because. MRCP has fallacies, about 10 to 15 percent false diagnosis, especially if there is impacted stone. If it is floating stone, this is very easy to be diagnosed by magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography because it appears as a focal defect. But when it is impacted in the papilla, it appears as a soft tissue area, interpreted as a soft tissue mass. But here by the endoscopic ultrasound, very nicely seen that it is a stone because it is very ecogenic very well defined with a dense posterior shadowing. And of course, ARCP proved the presence of a large stone in the common bile duct. It is impacted in the distal part of the common bile duct and all these structures are seen from station four of the stomach. This is a very nice case and very interesting case of a young female with CBD dilatation and there is a large papillary mass. This is station two as the region of the papilla. Station two at the region of the papilla in the second, mid-second part of the duodenum, appearing that this is a very nicely seen large papillary mass, and this is stent. It is stented. And uh, unfortunately, biopsies by the duodenoscope was inconclusive, just duodenitis. And here, examination from the stomach. Yes, examination, stop this video. Examination from the stomach. I can see the superior mesenteric vein and this is the, yes, this is the papillary mass and this is the second part of the duodenum and here the common bile duct is collapsed over stent. Common bile duct is not dilated because there is a stent inside and there is air inside. And here at the region of the papilla, I can see a large papillary mass. This is a venous a superior mesenteric vein. This is the aorta and inferior vena cava, and this is the head of the pancreas. And here I can see very nicely large papillary mass and the stent with air inside the well decompressed common bile duct. FNA was done, and of course it is, was done while I am in the duodenum because here the needle can pass easily to the mass, it is very near to the lumen, while here the mass is away from the echoendoscope, I should travel a long distance through the pancreas to reach the mass from the stomach. And passing through the normal pancreas carries a high risk of pancreatitis. So it is a, a large papillary mass, and this is the stent, very nicely seen, plastic stent to its air inside, well collapsed common bile duct seen from the stomach. And surprisingly, the patient, this FNA was done and the cytology suggested gastrointestinal stromal cell tumor. It is very rare, but can occur in the papilla. The patient was sent for surgery and the final histopathological examination proved that it is a GIST, GIST tumor, gastrointestinal stromal cell tumor. Now we finished examination of station four. It is a long station, no doubt, but very nice, very informative, somewhat difficult at the beginning, but after applying these techniques, 
for many, many patients. I think after 10 to 15 or 20 patients, you are all will mastering this technique. It is very nice because it gives us, give, gives us very nice information about the intra-abdominal uh, structures and became very important examination. Why? Because if there is gastric outlet obstruction, whether benign, due to benign causes, aspeptic ulcer disease or malignant causes, so you can't go to the duodenum. So you should do the whole job from the stomach. Then let us withdraw the echo endoscope more and more up to locate in the duodenal bulb. We locate the echo endoscope in the duodenal bulb with a slight push to impact the tip of the echo endoscope at the duodenal apex, which is the roof of the first part of the duodenum. But move very gently because here we may induce perforation if the movement is strong or violent. So we should move with the echo endoscope very gently in the duodenal bulb, especially. Here our landmark is the venous confluence. So in the second part of the duodenum, whether at the papilla or in the upper second part, we see the superior mesenteric vein. But when we move up to the duodenal part, I can see the superior mesenteric vein joining the splenic vein and forming the portal vein. Vein. The splenic vein is comes, coming from below to unite with the superior mesenteric vein and to form the portal vein. If I uh, properly located the venous confluence and started to do, to do clockwise rotation, I can see the superior mesenteric artery, common bile duct, and the pancreatic duct. And more and more clockwise rotation, I can see the inferior when I come back to the venous confluence and I do anti-clockwise rotation and, and I can see here the gallbladder. So let us go to this video. I am now in the bulb of the duodenum. And it is mild and pancreatic duct and superior mesenteric artery. Here anti-clockwise rotation and I can see my landmark very nicely, the splenic vein Yes, very nicely seen. Uniting with the superior mesenteric vein to form the portal vein. And this confluence is the most far structure from the echo endoscope. And as I mentioned before in the second part is the common bile duct, and here the pancreatic duct, and here the venous column confluence. This is opposite to what we will see in station four from the stomach. So from the duodenum, the portal vein is to the left, while in the stomach, it will be to the right. And the superior mesenteric vein is the opposite. Here it is to the right of the screen. In the stomach, it will be to the left of the screen. And the, the splenic vein coming from deep, from below, it will come from up in the stomach. Let us see the station four in the stomach later on. But now we will concentrate on the station three in the bulb of the duodenum with the meeting of the splenic vein from below superior mesenteric vein coming from the right to form the portal vein. So the portal vein, I can see it from the bulb of the duodenum. Yes, this is the venous confluence, very nice. When I do clockwise rotation, I can find the common bile duct, pancreatic duct, superior mesenteric artery. And more and more clockwise rotation, clockwise rotation, I can find the major vessels, aorta, and inferior vena cave. This is the venous confluence, clockwise, clockwise, clockwise. I can see the aorta and the inferior vena cava. Okay, let us go now to the station four, which is the most important and the most rich station. That is to say examination of the intra-abdominal structure from the stomach. I can see all the abdominal structures, including the, panc the whole pancreas, including the head. And even I can see the papilla in most patients, not really in all patients, especially in thin patients. But in obese patients, 
uh, sometimes in obese patients, I can see the papilla, but in up to 80% of patients, I can see the whole intra-abdominal structures, including the head of the pancreas, neck, body, and tail, and the whole lens of the common bile duct, the whole lens of the pancreatic duct, papilla, and of course, the aorta and its branches and the venous conference and also the unseenate process. So I can see all the structures from the stomach, including the papilla in up to 80% of patients. Here, the echo endoscope is located at the cardia. We start at the cardia or just below the cardia. At the cardia, I should search for my landmark of this station, which is the abdominal aorta appearing as a longitudinal structure. This is at the cardia or through the cardia. This fleshy structure is the right cross of the diaphragm. This is the right cross of the diaphragm. And the first big branch here is the celiac trunk. The first big branch is the celiac trunk. Okay. I push the scope downwards, push it inside the patient. Here I can see the first branch. The first big branch is the celiac axis with its three branches. Left gastric going to the right of the screen, splenic artery going to the left of the screen. And when I do anti-clockwise rotation, I can see the common hepatic artery going down and then dividing its two main branches, the hepatic artery proper going to the porta hepatis and the liver hilum to join the portal vein and the proximal common bile duct and the common, uh, common hepatic duct. And the other branch is going to the left side of the screen, which is the gastro duodenal artery going to the pancreatic head. And I can see also the superior mesenteric vein. Then, let us start our video, starting examination of station four. Okay, this is my landmark, the abdominal aorta appearing as a longitudinal structure. And here, this fleshy part is the right cross of the diaphragm. And this is the, the first large branch of the abdominal aorta, which is the celiac axis, expecting to see the left gastric going to the right of the screen, the splenic artery going to the left of the screen. And if I do anti-clockwise rotation, I can see the third branch of the celiac axis, which is the common hepatic artery. Then let us start the examination. Yes, very nicely. This is abdominal aorta. And this is the celiac axis. And this is the superior mesenteric artery. And this large branch, the third branch, is the left renal artery. And here, expecting the splenic vein. Let us see first what is happening this is the this is the celiac axis i will concentrate concentrate in the celiac axis yes, yes this is the celiac axis and this is the left gastric artery and this is the splenic artery and this is the splenic vein here is the region this is the region starting the region of the body of the pancreas at the level of the splenic vein but let us concentrate on the branches of the celiac axis. That is very important because sometimes I find malignant body mass it is important to see its delay to the celiac axis because any abutment, that is to mean abutment means that involvement of less than half of the circumference of the celiac axis or encasement involving of more than half of the circumference of the celiac axis, this means that the patient is inoperable. So it is very important to locate and examine properly the celiac axis and its branches. Let us continue the video. Yes, this is very nicely seen. The seagull, what is named as the seagull. The seagull is a bird, have a body and two long wings. This wing of left gastric artery and this is wing of the splenic artery. Okay, when I do anti-clockwise rotation, this is the third branch appearing by anti-clockwise rotation. This is the third branch of the celiac axis with the common hepatic artery. And here, this is the venous confluence. This is the splenic vein. Here, come, coming from up, opposite to the duodenum. 
and uniting with the superior mesenteric vein to form the portal vein going to the hepatic hilum, and this is the liver. The common hepatic duct will give rise to its main branches. The hepatic artery proper accompanying the portal vein to the hepatic artery and the gastrodinal artery going to the pancreas. So let us continue the video. Yes, this is the common hepatic, very nicely seen. And here, this small branch is a hepatic artery proper. This is not a small, but it is one of its two terminal branches, the hepatic artery proper, and this is the gastro duodenal artery going to the pancreas. So this is the seagull of the common hepatic artery. The common hepatic artery, hepatic artery proper, and the gastro duodenal artery. So this is the second seagull. The first one is the celiac with the left gastric and splenic. The second is the seagull of the common hepatic artery into hepatic artery proper and the gastro duodenal artery. And here nicely seen Sorry. And here, nicely seen the third seagull, which is the splenic vein, venous confluence, uniting with the superior mesenteric to form the portal vein. So these are the arterial and venous seagulls at station four. This is the splenic vein coming from up, and the superior mesenteric vein coming from the left side to form the portal vein going to the right side, opposite to that of the duodenum. So we saw now three seagulls, two arterial and one venous seagull from this station. Okay, we are now still in station four. It is a very rich station, as I mentioned before. We push the echo in the scope very minimal, few centimeter downward to see the superior mesenteric artery. So this is the celiac, and starting the left gastric. We are now concentrating on the superior mesenteric artery. So this is the celiac axis and the superior mesenteric artery arising from the aorta. And this is the superior mesenteric vein. The part of the pancreatic tissue in between the abdominal aorta and the superior mesenteric vessels, whether superior mesenteric vein or superior mesenteric artery, this is the uncinate process of the pancreas. We saw it from station one, just below the papilla with upward deflection, and we are now seeing it from middle aspiration of a uncinate process mass because there is a long distance to reach the mass, and you should pass through an important structure, somewhat risky. Some endosonographers are brave hearts and can pass through any vessel, but I don't prefer except if I oblige to. But if there is an uncinate process mass, simply I can go to the deep second part of the duodenum. It will be very near to the echo endoscope. Let us complete. Let us go on. This is the abdominal aorta, celiac, superior mesenteric artery superior mesenteric vein and part of the pancreatic tissue in between the abdominal aorta and the superior mesenteric vessels, artery and vein. This part is the uncinate process mass. Uh, the lecture of today will be a very important lecture about uh, basic linear AOS examination. How to examine the interabdominal and interthoracic structures by endoscopic ultrasound, different stations and the anatomical structures and landmarks of each station. There are many structures which could be visual, visualized during endoscopic ultrasound examination, including the systemic venous circulation, the inferior vena cava, the abdominal aorta and its main branches, the celiac axis with its three main branches, left gastric, splenic artery, hepatic, common hepatic artery, and the superior mesenteric artery, and so on. And also the portal venous circulation with the portal vein, superior mesenteric vein, and the splenic vein, and also the biliary system, including the common bile duct, and the gold bladder, and also the pancreas with its different parts, 
the uncinate process, head of the pancreas, neck of the pancreas, body of the pancreas, and the tail of the pancreas. So there are many structures which should be examined during endoscopic ultrasound examination. And these structures are crisscrossing each other. So there should be a roadmap for endoscopic ultrasound examination. And there should be different stations. And there should be landmarks for each station to complete our endoscopic ultrasound examination. Actually, there are four stations for endoscopic ultrasound examination, for abdominal examination by endoscopic ultrasound. Station one is just below the papilla. Station two is at the papilla. Station three at the duodenal bulb. Station four is just below the cardia and including the whole stomach. And also we should have a look on the liver, the mediastinum. Some prefer to do endoscopic ultrasound examination starting from station one. That is to say, at the beginning of the endoscopic ultrasound examination, we forward the echoendoscope to the stomach and then through the pyloric ring to the duodenum till the deep second part of the duodenum and then suck all the air and start examination from station one, from just below the papilla. Then we draw the echoendoscope gradually to go to station two at the papilla and station three at the duodenal bulb and station four just below the cardia and the stomach. Some prefer to do the opposite. Some prefer to start with station four at the cardia and just below the cardia and the examination from the stomach. And then shift to the uh, endoscopic view again to go to the bulb of the duodenum to examine station three and then to examine the, uh, at the uh, region of the papilla and just below the papilla. Both methods are correct. And I think the best way of EOS examination is the way that you are used to do and the way you are perfecting. So both methods of examination are correct. Nevertheless, let us start by each station and identify the anatomical structures and landmarks of each one. Station one, as I previously mentioned, is just below the papilla, and the aim is to visualize the uncinate process of the pancreas. Here, the echo and scope is just below the papilla. Here, this is the common bile duct and papilla, and the echo and the scope is just below the papilla. And at this position, I start to do upward deflection of the tip of the egg on the scope. Upward deflection means that the big wheel or the big knob uh, is moved towards my body. So there should be upward deflection in order to direct the probe towards the uncine process. Here our landmark is the abdominal aorta appearing as a longitudinal structure. When I see this landmark, the abdominal aorta as a tube, then I am correctly locating and correctly examining the station one. Here's a part of the pancreas anterior to the abdominal aorta is the uncinate process of the pancreas. Let us see this video. Yes, here I am in the deep second part of the duodenum, just below the papilla. With upward deflection, I can see the abdominal aorta in its longitudinal section. It appears as a tube. And this part of the pancreas, anterior to the abdominal aorta, is the uncinate process of the pancreas. So this station is very easy. And the aim of this station is to see the uncinate process of the pancreas. It is important to uh, mention that the uncinate process of the pancreas can be seen also from the stomach. So it can be seen from two stations, station one here, just below the papilla, and station four at the stomach, as I will mention later on. But here it is the best situation for EOS fine needle aspiration, because if there is an uncinate process mass, it is very near to the echoendoscope, no intervening structures, so it is very easy to take biopsy from this station, but usually use 
22G or 25G needle, because here the echoendoscope is tented, and mostly uh, there will be some resistance with using of 19G needles. So this is a very easy station. Now we'll go to station two. We withdraw the echoendoscope slightly upward to face the pillar. And by then I suck all air to kiss the papilla. Here our landmark is a stack sign. The stack sign is the meeting of the common bile duct and the pancreatic duct. The common bile duct is a channel or the tube while the channel away from the echoendoscope is the pancreatic duct. And this is the region of the papilla. The upper normal of the common bile duct in normal person is up to seven millimeter. And the upper normal after cholecystectomy is nine millimeter. The upper normal of the pancreatic duct is up to three millimeter in the pancreatic region, two millimeter in the pancreatic body region, and one millimeter in pancreatic tail region. So let us look at station two. Here, this is the abdominal aorta. But here it is the transverse scan of the abdominal aorta. It is not a tube, but it is a circle in station two. And this is the papillary region. And here the channel nearer to the echoendoscope is a common bile duct. And here is the pancreatic duct. And we notice here that is the muscularis propria layer of the duodenal wall as the region of the papilla. It is very important to identify the muscularis propria layer because if there is a papillary mass and invading the muscularis propria, then it is mostly a papillary adenocarcinoma and not papillary adenoma. It is T2 papillary adenocarcinoma, so it is not suitable for endoscopic ampullectomy but should be sent for surgery. Let us complete the video. This is the region of the papilla. This is the muscularis propria layer, and here we will put the color flow signal. This is the aorta, common bile duct, pancreatic duct, and here this is the superior mesenteric vein and superior mesenteric artery. Yes, common bile duct, muscularis propria layer, abdominal aorta, and superior mesenteric vessels. And here, part of the pancreas, part of the pancreatic head, part of the pancreatic head, uh, and out to the pillar region. So it is a common bile duct, again, pancreatic duct, and part of the pancreatic head. OK, let us withdraw the echoendoscope more and more up to, loc to locate the tip of the echoendoscope in the upper second part of the duodenum, proximal to the papilla and next to the first part of the duodenum. This is a very nice situation. I like it uh, very much. This position shows us many structures. Those two big vessels in the left of the screen is the inferior vena cava and the aorta. And here, these two far structures, two far vessels, Deep to the screen is the superior mesenteric vein and the superior mesenteric artery. And here expecting to find the common bile duct near to the echoendoscope, as I mentioned before, and the pancreatic duct next to the common bile duct. And this is a large part of the pancreatic head. And this position, usually we see most of the pancreatic head malignant masses, and we can properly judge the staging of this mess. Let us, let us continue the video. So this is the inferior vena cava, aorta, superior mesenteric artery, superior mesenteric vein, large part of the head of the pancreas, normal pancreas, salt and pepper appearance, the normal appearance of the pancreas, the salt and pepper appearance, expecting here to find the common bile duct. Yes, this is the common bile duct. The normal common bile duct, very nicely seen, and expecting here to find the pancreatic duct. Yes, this is the common bile duct. Yes, and this is the pancreatic duct. So I can see many structures. Most of the pancreatic head, common bile duct, 
pancreatic duct, superior mesenteric vein, and superior mesenteric artery. Here, the echoendoscope is at the upper second part of the duodenum. 